Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I'd really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you love this watch, you can see it and you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today we're discussing a watch that I love on every level. I love the brand and I love the subject matter. I really, really love the portrayal. This is the 2016 30-piece limited edition Ulysse Nardin Classico Cloisonne Enamel America. You can see the image of the schooner America winning what became in hindsight the first ever America's Cup in 1851, defeating a battery of UK entrants around the Isle of Wight. The timepiece, 40 millimeters in white gold, is flat and one has to say beautifully proportioned as the 40 millimeter size feels contemporary for a men's dress watch, but neither vintage nor oversized. This is a timepiece, 9 millimeters thick, 40 millimeters in diameter, and compact, lug to lug at 44.2, that I can recommend for a wrist as small as 13 centimeters in circumference, and you can see the watch is an easy fit on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. The spacing between the lugs 20 millimeters, but Ulysse Narda has included a wonderful strap. It's flat like the case, and you can see it is a large rectangular scale alligator leather, matte finish, monotone stitch, folded edge. A note on the bottom, this is a new UN factory strap, so you'll be able to gouge it first. A matching white gold 18 karat pin buckle for quick adjustments on the fly, and then a case that is graceful but distinctive. You can see individual numbering on the case flank with the numbering plaque held in place by oxidized bolts in the fashion of a 19th century Ulysse Nardin navigation chronometer. You would have seen the individual number plaque bolt fixed on the side. You can see that the lugs are dramatically stepped out from the case flank. The case flank is nicely rolled and almost a little bit pot-bellied, like a pot that you would use or a kettle that you would use in the 1850s to prepare tea. You can also see that the lugs themselves are sheer on their sides, a little bit rolled down their flanks, and they have some tumble home from the side to the center. And you can see that there's a little bit of arcing this way and there's a little bit of arcing this way. So they're more complex than they appear at first glance. Although the case flank is rounded, the vessel itself is sharply conical, rising dramatically from the case band up to the sapphire, and the dial depicting the America, a schooner, built in the United States, sailed across the Atlantic, and which successfully completed the first America's Cup 18 minutes ahead of the next nearest competitor. The America was impressive, not just the America's Cup winner, not just still competitive in America's Cup racing in the 1870s, not just a ship, or I should say boat, that sailed with both navies, Confederate and Union, in the Civil War, but a living legend of nautical folklore right up until its untimely end in the 1940s, which is why it's good that we can remember the America with this cloisonne enamel dial executed by hand at Donze Cadran, which is Ulysse Nardin's wholly owned enamel specialist. UN purchased the company in 2012. Donze specializes in Grand Faux, Champlevé, cloisonne, all of the enameling arts. So you can see everything that's a defining line. You can see the form of the sails, the shape of the hull, the land mass, the small boat, the competitor in the distance. You can even see some of the rolls of the waves. All of that is achieved using gold wire that is placed by hand. The enamel is then, it's a vitreous paint. It is then deposited within those little cloisonne discrete packets of, of golden wire to separate the enamel and create those sharp distinctions and the forms of the figures on the dial. You can also see where different thickness of enamel is applied. You can see in the sky there are different tones, there are different shades, and the same is true as you can see there's a little bit of a disturbance in the water around the boats, that's where it's lighter. That's not down to a different color enamel, that's down to differential enamel thickness applied at a different level. Fired up to 20 times at over 800 degrees centigrade, it is it's very difficult to create these dials because there's a high rejection rate, a little bit of trapped air or moisture, and they can tend to explode, they can crack, they can fracture. So it can be a laborious process, but Donze does it wonderfully. UN, one of the few manufacturers in the business that has this capability in-house. A big difference compared to the previous San Marco enamel dials, this one is loomed, and it's rare that I exhibit a watch dead stick, but I wanted all the figures to be visible, so I did not wind the watch. You can see that there are little cabochon in white gold that act as the hour indices. You have the Ulysse Nordin anchor in white gold, white gold hands at center. Turn it all over and you can see a very high grade ETA 2892A2. It's a certified Swiss chronometer here doing business as Ulysse Nordin caliber UN815. 
There is a spectacular rose lathe cut guilloche and inked 22 karat white gold winding rotor with bi-directional winding. You can see the chronometer grade splayed spoke balance, Nevorox one hairspring, regulated in five positions. COSC certified, of course, with a stop seconds function when the watch is fully wound, beating away at 28,800 vibrations per hour with a 42 hour power reserve and 50 meter water resistance. The movement is workmanlike, but exceptional pedigree given the thinness of the 2892A2 and the precision of a 2892A2 in chronometer spec. All of the romance of this watch is on the dial side, however. We love the heartbeat of mechanical movement, but when you're looking at craft art on this level, it has to take pride of place. You can see and purchase the Classico Cloisonne Enamel America on the watch box. Ulysse Nardin Classico. Cloisonne Enamel America, lovely leaf hands with correspondingly shaped loom.